Hello and welcome to the preview of the 2019 Giro Rosa, the 30th edition of what is the biggest, most prestigious race on the Women's Pro calendar. We're going to preview the race today. We're so excited to be able to bring you 60 minutes every day of the race. And we've got Danny Rowe, Olympic champion, and our very own Melen Noriega from GCN Espanol. We're going to have a look through the race. But before we get into the nitty gritty of this year, let's have a look back to last year. So the 2018 edition of this race was certainly a good one. And this year looks like it's gonna be even bigger and better. Now, both of you have ridden this race. Danny, what are your under sort of overwhelming memories of, of the Giro Rosa? Um, that it's savage. Um, yeah, the hardest race on the women's calendar and definitely the most prestigious, being the longest 10 days, it really is a war of attrition. And Mayalene, you rode this. You rode this race uh, twice, and, and you were telling me sometimes the Giro race of what, what kind of looks in the road. But we've been studying the stages, but it doesn't quite, you know, always pan out like that, does it? No, I love the Giro Rosa because it was the biggest race for a woman's. So we always look forward to it, but we always laugh because you saw something in paper, and then you went and do the stage, and it was it was supposed to finish uphill, and it's finished downhill. <laughs> so we just laughed. The Giro Rosa was always unpredictable. <laughs> Let's have a look ahead at the stages. So we kick off with an 18.8 kilometer team time trial. There was a bit of confusion on the website because it said there was a team time trial and an individual time trial on the same day, which uh, I think would have kind of struck the fear of God into some people because Annemiek van Vluten could have potentially put the race out of reach on day one. But that's quite a tough opening, isn't it? To put a team time trial on the first day. Yeah, it is really hard and something that the teams will have to have practiced coming into the Giro, especially ones with the GC contenders. It's such an important day. You have to work as a team and it is all about, you know, riders working together, um, really looking at who are the strong riders in this discipline to, to produce the fastest time. Because in a way, we've seen over the years, haven't we? And we've got a lot of climbers here because, because of the route. You know, you've got to get the plan, the tactics right, because for those climbers that might not be the strongest in a time trial, we've seen many a GC hope of, of overall victory unravel in the opening day's team time trials. Yeah, team time trials is something you really have to practice. And it's a, it's a long race, so you have to take it slowly and just with, with the thought that it's a long stage and you have to finish. So straight off of that into, into stage two, it's quite a lumpy one. We've got sort of a big climb at the beginning. For me, it has sort of an Anna van der Breggen surprise long range attack right on the second day. <laughs> yeah, I don't think she'll go that early. I think it'll be a really good chance for riders to kind of look at each other, suss out kind of what sort of form they're looking at, how they're climbing, um, and potentially one for, for a breakaway. We've also got as well, we've got a hilltop finish. And again, on the profile, it's hard to get. We were kind of going through maps and stuff, weren't we, to try yeah. and get an idea. But to be able to Cavalo, um, that hilltop finish, it's quite a short one, isn't it? Because sometimes we can look at the big mountains and they kind of almost neutralize the race. And we saw it in the women's tour, didn't we, with the hilltop finish that Nuvia Doma won, that sometimes the shorter little climbs can be really, really exciting. Yeah, and getting into their oh, everyone wants to go in front, so everything starts to get in chaos and all the teams working together and then you see all the falls and the stress and the one who is in the front is 
always in a good position, so. Skipping through the race, let's go to stage five, the stage that everyone's looking forward to, the stage to the Paso Gavia. Now, if you were watching the Giro d'Italia this year, you might remember that it got taken out due to bad weather, but we've got it in here, the weather should be a lot better. And that they love throwing an epic stage in. Last year, we had the we had the Montes Enclan, which, which you rode. I remember riding that and had a little whimper every, every few hundred meters. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> did you? Um, but the, the Paso Gavia stage, it, it's gonna be a big one, isn't it? And there's a climb early on, which could potentially sort of let riders test themselves out a little bit. Yeah, maybe they're gonna get some head start, but it's a long climb at the end. So the, uh, the general classification riders will just get them and just see each other. Right, the next day, it's short, but it's a time trial. And you, you gotta love it when they <laughs> when they put a time trial in the, the day after, uh, after a big day in the mountains. So a lot of the general classification riders who are targeting that Malia Rosa at the end, they're gonna be hoping and praying that they wake up with magic legs in the next morning. Yeah, for sure. And it's really kind of a day of two halves for the peloton. Half the, the, the riders will be going for, you know, either the stage victory or the GC. And then the other half will be thinking <laughs> of it as a rest day. Um, for me, last year it was a rest day, although it was uphill. So it was really hard to actually take it easy. Um, but yeah, I think it'll be really exciting this year. Not so hilly, um, but still one where I think we'll see quite big time gaps. Um, so looking on the stage seven to San Giorgio di Padlena, again, a lumpy stage. It's got quite a few climbs, uh, again, short, sharp climbs. Could be an interesting one. When we go to the Montasio climb on the penultimate day, it's got ramps of up to 20% in it as well. They used it in the 2013 men's Giro. If anyone's still within striking distance, that's gonna be a massive day with one day to go, isn't it? Yeah, I think that'll be the, the decider of the Giro Rosa this year. I think it's really not over and, until after that stage for sure. Um, so yeah, I think that'll be one where everyone will be, you know, going for, for the final victory. If they're, if they're gonna line it up, because this tw when you get into climbs that are up to, to 20%, Plus, again, there's a lot of factors that you have to think about on there in terms of making sure you've got the gear selection and everything, which is a little bit easier in, in modern day cycling with, with so many sprockets at the back. But do you take those sort of things into consideration when you see that sort of gradient on a climb? Yes, usually we, after every stage, we talk with the mechanics and they say, no, we recommend putting this and changing that. So all the girls on the teams go and talk to the mechanic and ask for what they want. So, And stage 10 into Udine, again, we can't get much information on the climb. We've kind of looked in and zoomed in on the on the maps as well, but it's 120 kilometers to get it finished. And it says that it finishes with a cobbled climb. So, you know, anyone that hasn't got anything out of this race so far, they're gonna they're, they're, they're gonna want this one. And um, we don't see a huge amount of sprinters go to the race, do we? That are sort of those pure sprinters is sort of, for me, it's got a Mariana Voss kind of feel to it that final day. Yeah, I'd definitely go for, for Voss on that day. And I think she'll be riding for Ashley Mormon Passio in the team for GC. So I think she will be looking for those sort of stages to, to be her kind of victories of the of the Giro. Do you wish you were there this year? Oh, uh, no, I, I, I like it here. <laughs> the too. Giro was always fun, but it was always really hard to recover after. Okay, well, that's the route. <laughs> Let's look at our race favorites. Right, let's look at our riders and our favourites. Top of the list has got to be Annemiek van Vluten. What a season that she's had. Winner here last year and she just absolutely dominated, didn't she? Broken leg at the World Championships as well. So what a legend came back from that. The victories that she's had so far this season, she does look on amazing form, doesn't she? Yeah, and I've been following her on social media and you can see she's really done the preparation again for this race, for this season. She's done multiple altitude camps. She's obviously been wrecking the stages. So she's definitely my pick for this year. I just love that Amanda Spratt was half wheeling her going up the Paso Gavia apparently, <laughs> yeah, according to Twitter. But um, for and a meet, the, the time trials as well, you know, they, do you think they're long enough and severe enough this year for her to really be able to, to make a, 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 as big a difference as we're used to? She's, uh, she writes every, anything, like she can do it all. She, if she sets her mind to it, she prepares for it and then amazes us all. It's incredible. Yeah, the next rider, let's move on to Anna van der Breggen. So this year as well, they, her team Bull Dolmans, they're very, very clever with her in terms of they, they, she, they say she brings so much publicity to the team that they let her 
kind of have a loose program and kind of do what do what she wants and she kind of comes into this um year's Giro maybe a little bit under raced on the road would you say yeah potentially she obviously won Cape Epic at the beginning of the season so she might not have that kind of endurance in her legs but you can never count out Anna <laughs> van der Breggen um she really is an all-rounder you know she can go up these mountains she can finish on short sharp climbs like flesh will on um, and she can descend like a demon. So yeah, she really is another one to watch. And I think it will be a battle again <laughs> between the two Dutch riders. Yeah. yeah, it's going to be a battle to relish. Right, <laughs> let's talk about Lucinda Brand. As we mentioned last year, was up there. I think she was the surprise of the race for me here last year, the way that she climbed and the way she went on to La Course as well. Um, she's probably, she's not really set the world alight so far this season, but again, another, she's such a steady rider, isn't she? That she could just pull something out of the bag from nowhere. Cause she's, we're used to seeing her go on those like massive long range attacks on those sort of lumpy stages where everyone's thinking about the Gavia stage. Yeah, I think she'll be really interesting to watch this year. I think she actually surprised herself last year. So potentially she would have done a bit more preparation. She's obviously been out, wrecked the course. And so that means it will be a big target for her. So I think I'm really excited actually to, to watch her race this year. Do you think as well for, for someone like Lucinda, because we see her winning, uh, you know, throughout the year, we see her winning in cyclocross, you know, again, and in women's cycling, you do get, and the men are kind of copying a little bit now, aren't they? But in, in women's cycling, we've always had that crossover between road, track, mountain bikes and, and cyclocross, haven't we? And, and it kind of makes you that really versatile rider that Lucinda is. Yeah, I think if you plan it well and you see it with your coach and you, with your team, you can do it. And I think cyclocross gives you something and then the road and then the mountain, your mind goes somewhere else. So everything seems new and you're really motivated to, to hit the target, so. Now, next rider that I'd like to talk about is Elisa Longaborghini. So when I went, it was at what, the stage start of the women's tour, she was standing waving, going, you! And uh, you know when you kind of look and you think, is she, she talking to me? And uh, so I had a good chat with her there, but Elisa Longaborghini, again, she's been second in this race in the past. She looked absolutely phenomenal at the Ovo Energy Women's Tour, the way she set up Lizzie Dignan in that one. Would you say potentially that that was work banked and goodwill banked for Lizzie to do the same for her here in the Giro? Because she looks like a rider reborn with Trek Segafredo this year. Yeah, and I think that's exactly it. She's got so much motivation and you can really see she's really happy in the team and it makes so much difference. I think happy head, fast legs, it really is true. <laughs> Um, so I think this will be her year and I'm, I'm really personally hoping that she'll have a great Giro. I rode on her with a team, on a team with her, sorry, for a couple of years and she's a great person on and off the bike. So I'm hoping she'll have a good race. Moving on, let's talk about a, a rider that's, you know, well, you've ridden, you've ridden on the, on a team with her as well. Mariana Voss, mm -hmm. the legend. That the is, boss. we could say the boss. <laughs> um, for Mariana, she had the stage win in the women's tour, unfortunately had a crash, cut her face, but she's back. She helped Lorena Webus to the to the European Games uh, title at the weekend as well. Do you think Mariana now looking at where she is in her career, do you think that she still has the that sort of edge in the high mountains like Anna Meek and, uh, and those sort of riders? And she might, as you said, target stage victories and, and work for Ashley Mormon. I think if she wants to target something, she could do anything, but I don't think she has. So I personally think she'll be working for Ashley Mormon Passio, who will be going for the GC and she will be going for the stage um, stage victories. I think her big target this year will be the world championship. So I think it'll be nice for Mariana to be able to come into the Giro. The pressure's off really to an extent. She's helping Ashley and then, you know, she'll definitely be going for those kind of stages as and when she can. They're a great partnership and a lot of people were quite sort of looking at that when the when the ccc live team was was announced at the back end of last year could you know two stars like that work together i think the the sort of um overwhelming thing with mariana is when you see her i think i think it's something like you know you can correct me on this well 350 victories she's had across road tracks yeah. cycle across everything but she still celebrates with the same joy as if it's her first victory yeah, she lives cycling, she breeds cycling. She's the best cyclist there can be. Uh, she does it all, cycle cross mountain bike, road. Um, I think she has won it all, but her motivation and spirit and the learning that she gives to everybody else, 
She's just the boss. Great ambassador for the sport. <laughs> right, another favorite, fan favorite, is Cecily Utrup Ludwig from <laughs> Team Bigler. We're looking forward to the interviews <laughs> on this from, from Cecily. But you, you know, she's a young rider, 23, and she's had she's had some strong performances this year. So all the all that the interviews that we love aside, <laughs> she's really developing into a really strong um, stage race rider. Yeah, she is. Um, but I don't think this year it will be a year for her to, to win the race. But again, she's developing year on year and it's really, really impressive to see. And I think it'll be a really great chance for her to learn to be a leader this year. Um, in a race like the Giro, you have to learn how to kind of, yeah, lead your team, to communicate um, and really work that to your advantage. So I think it will be another learning curve for her, but I think we will definitely see her up there in the top 10. Now, a rider that we, I, I liked, and I'm a fan, you know, <laughs> seeing go, going up the uh, the Zonkland last year, it was, it was Movistar's Ada Marino. She, I mean, I mean, as a climber, again, we don't get to see get to see her really go for it very often. Yeah, the Giro is, um, as Annie says, is the only opportunity for women because it's the only like race that has long uphills. So we get to see riders like Ada. I've raced with her since the beginning, and she's always been an uphill rider because she's tiny, but she's so aggressive and really good. So hopefully we get to see her on top. Okay, couple more riders. Now, one rider that's really caught my attention recently is WNT's Erica Bagnaldi. So a rider that appeared last year, sort of appeared onto the scene from nowhere. And I think it's taken a year or so for her backstory to sort of come out and in, men's cycling, we've got Primoz Roglic, but Erica Magnaudi is a former world-class cross-country skier, and she's also a doctor as well. And she, so she, again, can she, can, she can do everything, look after the team afterwards. But again, for, for an Italian rider, the, whether she's got the experience to ride for the overall, but that Paso Gavia stage, you know, that's going to be a big target for her, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. And it'll be really good for her to kind of show, I guess, a peloton what she can do and maybe be one that other riders won't be looking for. Um, so she might get a chance. So yeah, I think it's been really cool to see her riding this year. Again, she'll be developing year on year and learning all the time. So yeah, I'm looking forward to watching that race. Yeah, me too. yeah do, you think, do you think sometimes, again, when you're, when you're a home rider within, within a stage race, it, it, do you feel that sort of overwhelming pressure? Because there's there's a lot of attention on her going in going into this year's race i think it's pressure but then it's your home race so you have support as well so it's you have to channel it the way to get it better you want to be better so people are aiming for you and cheering for you that has to make you motivated and do it better <laughs> yeah you got to cope with the pressure right final <laughs> rider that we'll talk about is ashley mormon pasio from ccc live again uh, over the last few years she just looks sort of every year just taking that step up and that big victory like this, the sort of the biggest stage race that there is, you know, that's not far away from her, is it? No, and she really wants it. She's had such an unlucky season though this year. She's had crashes and, you know, injuries. So I'm really hoping that this will be the race for her. She's obviously got that great partnership with Mariana Vos. She's got a great team. Obviously I was riding for, for them last year and it was a, an amazing team, super professional. Um, I know she's really happy in the team. So yeah, I'm wishing her all, all the best for this race and hoping she comes out on top. So those are our favorites for this year's race. Right, let's get to the most important part. And, and Danny, you know about the curse of GCN. It's strong in <laughs> us. So in terms of race predictions of this, this year, who, who, who are you looking for? I think it has to be Annemiek van Vluten. Looking at how she's been preparing for this race, yeah, I think she's going to be the hardest to beat. Oh, for me, I would love to see Anna van der Breggen. Like, uh, Van Blauten is uh, really strong, but Anna van der Breggen is just my favorite, so I wish she could win. Right, I'm going to go with Elisa Longaborghini, big fan, Trek Segafredo. What a season they're having as a team. I think that, you know, she's going to take the victory this year. So I hope I haven't given her the GCN cuts. I really hope that. So that's our race. That is our riders. So as we said, we've got 60 minutes every day. And Marilyn will be with me for the first three days. Danny will be with me for five. And then we'll have Grace Garner, pro rider with high tech products for the final couple of days. That's on GCN Racing. Make sure you head over there and subscribe to that one. We know it's going to be an absolutely monster edition of the Giro Rosa this year. And we're really excited to be able to bring it to you. 
Big thanks as well, our favorite spot here, Amaroni here in Bath. They've uh, provided us with uh, a few snacks and some wine. So I think all <laughs> it remains from us is to say, ciao, salute. Salute, cheers.